Hi, I'm Vince Samios and I'm converting a shipping container into a tiny house style home office. In the previous episode, we installed the windows and in this episode, we're gonna be doing some wiring. In the UK, we use what's called a ring main circuit. So this is a 2.5 mil cable, one strand of which is capable of holding 16 amps. So if we've got two strands, we can carry 32 amps to every socket. And what we do is we connect both ends of the ring at the fuse board and then at intermediary points, we connect sockets. So we can have one socket, another socket, and another socket. Now, an easy and simple way to do this, rather than cutting the cable and connecting it at every socket, is you just bend the cable and strip it at intermediary points. And then you've got an unbroken piece of cable that can go into every socket. Yes, electrical wiring can be very dangerous, but it also isn't particularly complicated, especially in a small shipping container like this. If you aren't confident, then don't do it. But if you are, then please do it at your own risk. I know this particular installation is very safe because we have an RCD fuse at the main house fuse board. We have an intermediary 13 amp fuse, and then we have another RCD fuse for the container itself. So I'm absolutely certain that there's no risk here at all. So this is the lighting circuit that allows me to switch two lights by running just one cable through a double switch bank. So you can see there's two switches there. So what I'm doing is I'm using a three core and earth uh, wire. So there's three wires plus the earth wire. I'm using the brown on the supply side for the line, black for the neutral and of course ground is ground. I'm not using the gray line on the supply side. When I get to the switch, I'm jumping obviously the supply over to both switches and then I'm using the brown and gray wires to supply each of the lighting circuits. So on the end here, you can see the neutral is common for both lights. That's light one and light two. Brown is for light two. Ground is of course ground for light one and light two and brown is for light one. So that means I can switch either the brown or the gray line with a common supply coming from the fuse board. So I've done something a little bit stupid because I've forgotten which wire goes to the lights and which wire goes to the fuse box. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of testing, but it's not a big problem really. So I've figured out which is which, and I did that by shorting a battery across two of the wires. And I was able to see a spark, and that told me that these bottom two go to the lights, and the other two go to the fuse board. Now I don't need to use the ground wire or the neutral wire. The neutral wire goes all the way through to the lights. So I won't strip the uh, neutral wire and the ground wire I'll just connect it to the grounding point on the back box. And then it's a simple case of just wiring each of the two lights into each of the switches. Okay. So I've got the supply, jumped across both switches, light one, Light to neutral, that can just be tucked back in there. The door power supply is very simple. It's just one straight line with neutral ground and live wire, neutral ground and live wire on both ends. Very, very simple, just one straight run. It just goes from the fuse box across the top of the window, down the wall to the charge controlling unit here. From the charge control unit, the wire is routed back through the steel that I welded into place to this steel frame that houses the door enclosure. And then you can see a contact for that. And where the charge is actually supplied to the door. And that's right here. So from this contact point, it then goes into the door itself. And that's how it charges the battery pack. So the ring main circuit goes down from the fuse board across. And then we start to go all the way around the container to all of the sockets that you see here. When we get to the end, I haven't run any cable by the where the doors are, so instead I've taken it up across the ceiling, which you now can't see, and then down to the socket on the end there. From that socket, I'm going back up again, across the top of the window, down to this socket here, then back up again, across the top of the door, and down to this socket, back up, across the top of the window, down to the socket that you see there, and then from that point, we're going straight back up to the fuse board. The lighting circuit is very simple. It goes from the fuse box up across the top of the window, pops out 
above the top of the window in the middle there, then back across to the top of the door where it pops out again just above the door, and then finally across to the third point which is again above the other window. So that's just one straight run. This is the supply cable, it's a 10mm cable that is easily capable of handling 40 amps. So eventually when I connect that into my home fuse board at a, a 32 amp circuit this will be more than enough. But in the meantime what I'm doing is I'm going to wire it in through a UK power plug. Now UK power plugs are clever in that they include a fuse, so it's got a 13 amp fuse. So if I wire the entire container through the fuse board via one of these power plugs, the container is considered an appliance and that means that we don't have to notify the council of works and get all sorts of sign offs and get all sorts of testing done. We've done that testing anyway so in future we can go back and connect this to my home supply but for now it's just going to be through a UK power socket. That'll mean the container is limited to running 13 amps at 240 volts but that's more than enough for everything that I need for the time being. Eventually that extra 16, sort of 18, 19 amps would be really handy and really useful, but for now that's more than enough. So this is main supply. And then we have these two here, which is the ring main. We have the door supply, and then we have the lighting circuit. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, I'll be installing some insulation, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a like. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. Check out my Instagram, and if you have the means, if you can pop over to Patreon and support me, that would be fantastic.